Okay, check one, two. We on? Okay, good. So, hi everybody. My name is uh, Eli, and I am one of E24's product managers. And <clears throat> our founders asked us basically to come and tell a story of a very unconventional company here in Silicon Valley that what we do is we bring you great food from the local restaurants around you. Um, a little bit about the people behind this product. We have Nadav, Nadav Shawon, our CEO. We have Chaim, uh, which is our president. Chen, which is also known as Chashi, which is our operations. Moani, which is sales and BD. Asi, which is Nadav's brother, he was, uh, is in charge of support. And Amir, which is in charge of social media, which we'll talk a lot about today. Um, kind of the story behind this great group of people uh, Nadav and Chaim were very good friends from the army, um, and Nadav and Chashi shared an apartment together. And basically, 2008, they, they live in San Francisco, Nadav runs a pizza place, Chashi lives, uh, you know, stays with him, everything's great, they get hungry, and they want to order food. But, you know, I don't know if any one of you, when was the last time that anyone around here tried to order chicken tikka masala or taco or, I don't know, pad thai or something like that and saw that sometimes you don't really, the person on the other line doesn't really understand you, you don't really have reception, maybe there's some noise around the other line. So that was around the situation in 2008. And of course, so what, where was the other resort? Online, but guess what? Delivery.com has a shitty site, can't really understand what to do there. Everybody's talking about Seamless, but it's only offered for corporations, so not really uh, a consumer website to do. Well, so you know, hungry people, very basic need, that was the opportunity right there. And then, what did we decide to do? We said, yalla, let's do it ourselves. And so, 2008, first site comes up. We tried to raise money. We were being told we're unrealistic. We don't know what we're doing. Um, and you know, the very trenches in the beginning of any startup basically. So we said, no investment, no problem. We're still gonna go at it. I mean, you know, we're from the restaurant business. We know what we're doing. We understand our deal, et cetera, et cetera. And of course, we were so determined. So our MVP, we didn't even have a confirmation system. We would get orders online and just confirm it over the phone. We would call the restaurants and deal with all, you know, the barriers that I just told you, basically placing those orders. So, as we moved along, E24, as you all know, is a marketplace. So we have two side, sorry, acquisitions that we basically need to do. One is restaurants. And so, how did we actually grow the network of restaurants? We started west to east, as we were in San Francisco. So we started from San Francisco, which is our hometown, and basically went around, started talking to all, re all these restaurant owners, telling them, look, you can start getting orders online. What do you want from me, blah, 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 whatever. And then, you know, we, ha we had the famous saying, who do I talk to to give a money printing machine? And so basically, <laughs> that would basically, you know, buy in and really help. And so after San Francisco, we moved down to Los Angeles and then San Diego, then we moved east. Same methodology for every city in the United States, which was Morani and Chaim getting on a plane, packing up uh, their bags, and basically flying around less than a week, signing tens to hundreds of restaurants, every city. Now, as days you know went by, and of course we were a bootstrap business, we didn't have any funds, so we actually started building our own sales team, and today E24 has a 50 strong sales team, which is covering 1,500 cities, 25,000 restaurants, and growing. Now users, how do we get to hungry people? How, how do we do that? So, you know, 2008, bootstrapped startup, not a lot of money, we can't really afford, you know, all the common acquisition channels that all these cool startups can, you know, do, and it's 2008, no one really wants to give you their money. And so, we have to be really creative about it. What we figured out was that users, if they go and order online, they usually do it from the restaurant site. So we said, opportunity, right there. So what are we gonna do? Most of these sites are, you know, I don't know if anyone, when was the recent last time any one of you has seen a restaurant website uh, lately, from 2008 especially, but it looks like some sort of like a calling card, basically. 
And so the ones that were capable of accepting orders didn't really work well, so we said, okay, let's create a white label for restaurants. What is this white label, basically? It's an ordering system, and it was for free. We gave it to restaurants and we said, look, we're gonna integrate our ordering system in your website so you guys can you know, start accepting orders. We're not gonna charge you a dime for it. Restaurants didn't have, a, didn't have a website, no problem, we'll make it for you. That's awesome. Thing is, is that after we basically got those sites on board and users would start placing those orders, what we did was we started to retarget the users and basically telling them, you know what? You don't have to order just from that restaurant. You can come on board and you know, order from a few other restaurants that we got here in E24. And so two years later, we actually reached 100,000 active users. And again, for free. So I don't know who of you has heard about E24's marketing agenda and what we do and who we are, but I want to tell you a little bit about it. So basically, E24's entire marketing agenda is leveraging a unique voice into a viral exposure. Basically, we basically utilize our unique voice and we, you know, make fun of conventional issues such as we live in Silicon Valley. There are all these awesome startups that raise an amazing, amazing rounds, really. A lot of respect to that. We also have a great amount that we raised. Zero. Mm -hmm. And so that was something that really helped us kind of, you know, Get it, get the word out there, spread the word out there. Of course, 2014, everybody had a Facebook page. Everybody enjoyed advertising on Facebook, especially Q2 2014. So we said, you know what? We'll turn off ours. And so, and we'll turn off the advertising. That also kind of created a big sensation, getting a lot of coverage. And of course, if speaking of Donald Trump, speaking of his great opinions about immigrants, why not have him help us sell some tacos? So every time Donald Trump sent Mexico in the last Republican uh, debate, we gave a $5 coupon. So that is one of the ways that we basically do our viral, um, viral kind of uh, exposure. Another one in terms of retention. So every time a user signs up, the laughing and the fun, they don't end, they don't end there. I mean, you know, food, we eat it three times. We do it three times a day, so we want you to think about it. So one of the things we're doing for retention is we're sending you emails every Friday with great jokes, great coupons. So you can actually go ahead and order now. You know, making people laugh works. It's actually, you know, it's our strongest basically organic retention tool, I wanna say. And it gets to a situation where people, even if they barely use our app, they still will take this email and they'll read it through their whole office on Friday at 9 a.m just to kind of make people laugh, give them a good feel. It even got read out on the radio a few times. The reason it's sent out on Friday is because we know that people like to order food on the weekends. So we're just preparing it for them. We'll, give, we'll tell them, hey, get some slack, you know, enjoy. So another thing that, of course, the local Bay Area people here have probably noticed is our offline marketing campaigns. Very known for, you know, our bus stop ads, which, was, which were all over San Francisco. And again, we do not say with words and we told Hunger to shut the F up across all these great ads. We also had billboards, one in the Bay Bridge, across the Bay Bridge right here. It's a little bit small, but a lot of cars. And in Miami, and of course we have our homemade uh, TV advertisement. Now, the funny thing is, it's not that expensive at scale. And it actually has a great cost benefit analysis if you kind of come to think about it. Because think about it, E24 is all about local advertising. It's all about local restaurants. I mean, if I'm in San Francisco, I don't really care about the restaurants in LA, you know? So yes, I'll see this brand and I'll say, okay, cool. And you know, it's rude, it's funky, it's fresh. I, I relate to it, I like it. So it actually has been working great for us. Is this working? Yeah. Okay. Um, now another thing in regarding to this offline, uh, this offline venture that we have. Unlike a lot of uh, other companies, we have our own marketing agency in-house. We basically do everything in-house, in, from the creative all the way to the design print, and then, of course, the analysis here. We also see how the effect of a local advertising comes about in terms of both user acquisition and restaurant acquisition. Another great campaign which we had, which was very daring, was porn. 
We actually, yes, we actually advertised on porn sites. We did that. <laughs> so I'm gonna let you give a little peek at it while you're at it there, you know? Very interesting. <laughs> um, and so this is, again, another fearless marketing attempt that we have, which was pretty ballsy, I have to say, but it turned out to be very successful, as we can see around here. So in terms of our market reach, yes, we had 40 million potential customers that like viewing this. It's 90% cheaper than the common channels, you know, that are out there like Google, Facebook, and Twitter. We got three times more impressions than our Google ads. 40% app download spike, especially late at night. And guess what? 90% of the conversions were new customers and they came back four times compared to Facebook, Facebook conversions. Now again, as you can see, we made sure to place a very tempting uh, ad. I don't know if the, this actually shows it to you, but a very tempting ad right next to where the action is happening, giving you three <laughs> different types of this. So yeah, it worked out pretty well. And we also got a little bit of coverage for, about it. Last thing in terms of our unconventional marketing is our Super Bowl ad. E24 got to a place where it actually <laughs> put it on Super Bowl. This bootstrapped, you know, startup we got here. So basically, this is another really great example where we took it from, from app to commercial. And so Hangry is E24's Tinder for food, basically. It's our one-click order app. No bullshit, just order. You're hungry, you're hangry, you want it now, boom, click your button and you got it. And then basically late January, this got a lot of media coverage. It got to the top five searches on the App Store during that week. And then of course, February 1st, we launched our famous uh, commercial with Snoop Dogg. Um, this is actually my favorite slide, talking a little bit about our unconventional company. Um, so first of all, as you all know, we did not have any investment. So no investment meant no pants policy. E24's no pants policy is basically saying that you know, we wanna give it, you know, wanna help you and wanna serve you the best way we can, very freely, very openly. Our entire no pants policy for customers basically means that we want them to access the door with no pants, pick up the food, and get back in. So in terms of Nadav, our CEO, which was you know highly involved and talking to everyone, accessible, approving ideas very quickly, and you know, no politics, no bullshit basically ended up in executing very quickly to everything we basically everything we wanted in terms of marketing and product and operations and sales so that was very helpful as well kiss keeping it simple so you know people need to eat right and so if we make it complicated it doesn't gonna, it's not gonna work especially for some of our customers that sometimes they can get high they can get drunk sometimes they're both so you know we have to keep it simple for them, otherwise they're just not gonna use us, you know? Not even mentioning, I don't know who is here in the local business area, restaurant owners, they don't really like some, too much sophistication. They just wanna help them make money. So it's very, very important for us to keep it simple on both ends of our products. Competition. Yes, E24 is a highly competitive market. That is true. I know, yeah, you know, we're part of Yelp now, and so, but we still have a lot of competitors. Um, and basically, we keep a close eye on what our competitors do, but we are very proud of the fact that we always try to outthink the competition. Doesn't matter what, we're not gonna copy our competitors, we're gonna think how to make it better. Why? Because this is some of the mentality that we had when we were bootstrapped. We didn't have the luxury of following the trend. We had to beat it all the time. So it's very deep into our you know company DNA. Of course, we have our own lean methodology, it's called Yala. And basically, we're not afraid. We're not afraid to get it to get anything out. We know that we're gonna probably have to correct it, but we wanna execute quickly, we wanna do it quickly. We're always gonna keep on improving. That's what got E24 to be basically one of the best, if not the best, ordering experience uh, apps and online, uh, and online web apps that are out there today, just because of that. Because we didn't, we didn't perfect it when we first launched. Hell, we got orders over the phone. And yes, now we have all these fancy uh, ordering systems and everything, but still, this is what got us there. Um, again, we, you know, everybody, we don't have, we try not to have meetings at E24. 
Uh, basically, everyone's talking informally. Everything's everybody's getting shit done together. We talk to everyone. Everyone's involved except for a janitor. Well, maybe sometimes he's also involved. <laughs> but basically, you know what this does to a team, and especially to a team that is when we got when we got acquired today, we're almost 300 people. It forms a very very strong and close group of people in making them in a very very strong team. And basically, it ends up being. You know, that we're not just friends at work, and I know that it's a little cliche to say this, but it's not just friends at work, we're also friends across work, behind work. It doesn't matter, if you're part of the E24 family, then you're part of it. And so, now comes the love story. How did this all happen? So, like any good, you know, love story that begins, there's, it always begins with a rejection. So, remember those white label websites we were talking about? ends up that most restaurants use those websites as their actual sites. Now, there's this great platform called Yelp, and it gets a shit ton of traffic. And basically, what those restaurants do, they put their websites on there, right? So we're gonna get some of the traffic as well. And so Yelp sends an email to Nadav and, and Morani and tells them, yeah, we, you guys need to stop spamming our, you know, spamming our platform because you're, you're all over it, you know, with, uh, with your websites and everything. But the thing is, is that it's the rest 2013, finally Yelp got it and basically we formed a partnership. And E24 became the uh, integrated ordering platform within Yelp. Today Yelp has, if I'm not mistaken, four platforms, E24 being the leading platform on Yelp. Of course, 2014, you know, we broke all of our commitments basically ended all of our other relationships with other platforms. And of course, 2015, we got married. February, we got acquired by Yelp. Um, and we've been there ever since. A little bit about our products and you know, kind of where E24, where it started, the first slide that we kind of showed you and where it is today. So of course, E24's consumer, uh, consumer platform is across all devices, as you can see. And E24 today is not just about uh, consumer ordering. We're also giving tools for restaurant owners, E24 orders, which is our basic, our mobile platform for restaurant owners to allow them to receive orders instead of the faxes that they used to get or emails that we used to get. Today we actually have a tablet, an Android tablet sitting in every restaurant that we work with. Either that or they can actually get it all the way to their phones today basically allowing them to accept their orders very easily. Another thing that we allow restaurant owners to do is manage their delivery fleets with our driver apps. Um, a little bit about our, you know, for companies, some of you, if you ever get hungry at work, I guess that happens every day as well. So we also have corporate accounts, basically allowing companies to easily order food and, you know, give your employees the budgets. I really hope that you give them a lot. So it's, it's my product, so it's awesome, you know, it's great. Um, and so, E24 Deliveries is our uh, delivery service, which I don't know if some of you have heard, we've partnered with Sidecar. We are in five major uh, cities today in the U.S., beating almost 500, beating more than 500 restaurants, maybe 600, around the United States today, and massively growing every week. And again, of course, we have our CRM system, which is our unique sales CRM system, which we built based on the, method, on the sales methodology, which was developed by those two people. And so today, our sales team actually uses this, allowing us to you know, maintain and sustain our fast growth. So, lessons learned. One, there's no such thing as, be, and as unrealistic. Don't really, don't take it from anyone. Go do it. Two, be unconventional. Be, remem be memorable. Be, you know, don't be afraid to say what you want to say and be what you want to be and kind of pronounce it out there. Worst case scenario, you fail, you know? Happens, but it's all good. Again, third, we always like a good side, you know, a good addition to our side. It's either guac or cheese or whatever. But the most important lesson learned here is this. Just go do it. Thank you. Where's the food? <laughs> Get us some. <laughs> so, the, the Yelp acquisition, how does it impact you in terms of the next foreign campaign you want to do, will they let you do it? 
Well, in terms of porn, I'm not <laughs> no, sure. I'm, I'm but, saying something like that. When you're yeah, in but, a corporate environment, you lose so, it. So, yeah, so one of the things, and that's a great question, actually. In terms of the, our marketing, that's actually one of the things that Yelp is uh, a big backer for. They're very, you know, they're very excited about our unique marketing techniques and the way we do things. And, you know, they're a big brand. They're, you know, they're a big name, but they need to deal with how do you advertise in low cost, low cost uh, uh, at prices, and how do you actually get those users in? And so they're very much following our. We're still this. It's the same marketing team. It's still there. It's being led by the same, you know, kind of agenda. And so there isn't any changes made. Yes, there's a little bit more filter. Yes, we do need to think about, you know, every here and there what we want to say. But still, like for example, Donald Trump was a massive success. That you know wasn't like you know the most polite thing. So we're still we're still doing our doing it our style. Yeah, you can do it for Chinese every time he says China. Yeah, see, yeah. throw a dumb shirt. Sure. For sure. Yes. Yes. As you spoke, my sense of you was that you're mainly a sales and marketing engine. You didn't really get into a lot of technology talk and got the CRM piece. Is that how you're evolving and trying to create an engine that you're going to license out? With So we are, yes, we are a food service at our core. We develop a lot of technologies around that, uh, such as, for example, for, like I said, our restaurant owners, um, basically allowing them to accept orders um, through our platforms. That maintains them within the system and allows them to basically depend a lot on, still on our system. That obviously gives you a lot of penetration options. Um, our ordering systems, the way we accept orders, which is also something that we built in house. That is another thing, um, you know, that we obviously rely on, the whole company relies on that. And now that we're a part of Yelp, I mean, in there we have the biggest inventory of restaurants in the world. So that's basically our growth strategy moving forward. Now, again, B24's growth strategy still maintains, still is sustaining itself and, you know, getting more restaurants, getting more hungry people, giving them the best experience possible. Around that to itself, there is a lot of development uh, in the technology aspect and the marketing aspect. Yeah. What is something that you tried, like it was an amazing, amazing team, amazing stuff, right? What are some, some of the things that you tried and maybe did for its own dead end, like some kind of best that you have done in the house? Yeah, um, that's actually a great question. Uh, one of the things that we try doing, so relating to your question before, we had an attempt to really become a POS of a restaurant. You know, we were saying we're giving so much volume and we're doing all that stuff. It's an effort that I don't think that we're necessarily have given up on, but we were more shifting towards, you know, instead of operating the whole restaurant, we're just gonna focus on our core and basically know we know how to give restaurant orders, how to manage all that, that whole experience. So that's probably something that I would say we what we might get back to in the future, but that's a lesson learned to basically focus on your core, but still branching out to the restaurant with restaurants was very important because it allows us to enhance our experience to really optimize it the way we want. Yes. Um, so you talked about kind of the agile um, cycle that you have, deliver, you learn, whatever. Yes. Yeah. Um, do you, were you afraid to burn users in by delivering something that wasn't good enough? Or was that not a fear or that, that disaster? Look, so it's a great question. It's, it's always, I would say it's always the, you know, you always have the dilemma. I'm not, I, I, I'm gonna ship it, I have to ship it perfect because otherwise I'm gonna lose the users because if I don't ship it perfect, then I'm gonna lose the users. So. But, but then you know you kind of you have cost effective but then at the end of the day because you're very short on funds and you don't have so much time to waste so you don't have all that time to wait you're just pushing it and you're saying okay I'm gonna use use I'm gonna lose users but I'm gonna acquire more and I'm gonna get more and I'm gonna improve and I'm gonna improve the the experience as I as I move along now of course e24 today have its standards we're a well-known brand we have to sustain those standards as well but still it's in our DNA to launch very quickly and to do it and not be and not be afraid not to do it, not to scare off because you see a lot of products being held off especially in our industry that's some in a way we actually turn it into into one of our advantages yes can you describe it more the, the wheelie uh, uh, snap, snap around, 
Can you? Can, I'm sorry. The wedding, you, the wedding dinner. Oh. The dinner like what? <laughs> so, so yeah. So in terms of the in terms of the marriage, so um, you know, E24, like I said before, was uh, a partner for Yelp for quite a while, for quite a long time, and you know, Yelp at the beginning said, okay, you know, we'll let this little platform in, and you know, they'll probably generate some orders for us, and all of a sudden, Yelp, you know, actually said, wow. You know, they're actually really attractive, you know? They're bringing us all these flowers all the time and they're giving us all these gifts and chocolates and great food and, okay, you know, it's, it's working, something's working. And then they said, okay, you know what, let's try some others. And so they brought other people to the table, but just figured they saw that, you know, like we were so far ahead, you know, and I don't want to sound, God forbid, you know, condescending or anything, but the size that E24 has brought to them and the volume was so big that they just said, look, it makes sense. You know, it makes sense to make the integration um, between Yelp and E24. There's a little secret I can tell. Um, today we have our second bus stop campaigns in San Francisco. The first one was deliberately made before the acquisition to kind of remind us, remind them, hi, we're still here and we're, and you know, we're getting you guys what you want. And of course, the Super Bowl commercial, et cetera. But, February came um, and, you know, we got to the office and, you know, Nadav sent an email to everyone that morning, please, you know, come meet us at, at our uh, at our hangar, which is our kind of big get together uh, area. Mm. And basically, you know, the young people were there and he basically said, guys, guess what? We're getting married. We're getting acquired by Yelp. So that was that day. Last question. Yes. Can you talk a little bit more about the Yelp relationship? And what I mean by that is, one, how did you secure it at first? And then the second question is, what worked really well in the local Okay, just so I see that I understand your question is correct. You want to see what, how the relationship got built? How did you build it initially yes. to get that partnership? And then what worked well? What was a little bit different? In the, in the, in the present? No, for, you know, kind of throughout, obviously. Yeah. Okay, so building the relationship with Yelp, like I said, was all about the partnership at the end of the day. I mean, E24 also integrates Yelp very heavily, for example. Let me revise it. Okay. How did you get in the beginning? How did we get in the How beginning? How did you actually secure that? You know, uh, like I said, you know, we got rejected. So basically they knew that we were, you know, we, they knew our name, they knew who we were. And then E24 starts growing, starts really kind of getting their name out there starts doing things differently. You know, they're all in all about the local businesses. A lot of restaurants are working with E24. They're starting to get revenue from E24. And so now they're like, okay, let's start talking. You know, and then basically the partnership was set. And then throughout the partnership, obviously there were some things that, you know, it's very important for us, like we've said before, the experience and really kind of making sure that things go well so you're like, okay, we want to improve this. You want to do this like this differently. And they're like, no, we can't do it like that. That's too evasive. That's too that, you know, in, in a lot of different perspectives. But then at the end of the, eventually they kind of, you know, some things worked out, some things didn't work out, but it really was pretty much smooth sailing. The whole process took about between, I want to say eight to 10 months eventually. Thank you very much.